Okay, I would like to start off by just again thanking the players uh, for being here in this voluntary part uh, of the of the off season. Uh, over the last two weeks, we finished with uh, phase two, um, and that's really where we give the uh, strength coaches the the schedule. You know, they they take the bulk of the schedule. Um, you know, for strength gains, and we thought we did a nice job with that. We actually have the offense and defensive lines actually lift a little bit more than the skill guys. Um, and they're actually in there together a lot, which we think is important uh, just for the groups to be together, uh, for camaraderie and, and also just the strength gains for the for the coach or for the uh, strength staff to really focus on those guys. Uh, and then we segued into the phase three. You know, we're into day two right now. Uh, I thought it went well yesterday. You know, guys being out there operating with the larger number. Um, you know, having the, the the full squad out there, so that was pretty good. Uh, just the logistics of that. And then we operated. You know, we we played had some team periods together at the end. You know, three or four team periods at a seven on seven. So guys are looking good and operating well. Um, and then the second day here, I thought we did a, a good job of adjusting some of the things, uh, just practice wise, what we need to get done. Uh, been focusing on uh, special teams. That's been a big phase for us. You know, we working off on all phases of that. So that's an important piece. And we're really trying to find those guys. Uh, that are going to be, uh, you know, core teamers for us. You know, every team has about four to six of those guys, and that's a big part of what Hightower and myself are looking at right now. So um, I'll open up to questions from there. Matt, on this first day of, of practices, or second day of practices, what specifically are you looking for? Because obviously it's not, you know, play running or anything, so what are you hoping to – get from the players during this uh, Yeah, just, you know, uh, I'm looking for a lot of things, honestly. There's a lot of things that we as coaches look at. You know, you look at, number one, the physical side of it, you know, the, the athletic skill, the traits, you know, the, the body control, because you have to have great body control uh, in this environment. You have no pads on, you have a helmet, you got to do a great job of staying on your feet, um, knowing how to operate. So body control, it shows athleticism. And I think that's a big part of what we look at. You know, it doesn't matter if you're an O lineman, D lineman, or receiver, or DB. Um, every position has to have that. That's one of the things we look for. And then really being able to function um, offensively and defensively in terms of execution. You know, can you get the play? Can you get the call? And can you execute the call um, at your position? And that's a, that's a key component to it. Watch film on uh, some of the guys that were here before you took the job as part of your research, or did you do all that? Yeah, yeah, I think you got to do that, you know, because they're going to have roster questions uh, in the interview process, you know. So you got to say, hey, what do you think about Justin Fields? Hey, what do you think about Mooney? You know, so the guys that are going to be on the football team, uh, they certainly ask those questions um, as you go through it. Not as many as I'm sure Ryan got, you know, when he interviewed uh, because of the personnel guy side of it, but. uh, yeah, you definitely look at those guys. So when did you st- on that line? When did you start looking at uh, Jalen Johnson, and what did you see in your initial studies on him? Yeah, so J- so Jalen, uh, you know, young player uh, is is still a work in progress. He's he's got th- some things he's got to work on, just like all the rest of those guys that are in their second, third year players. They all got to work on stuff, and uh, just uh, just work, keep him working, and uh, we'll see where he goes. From our vantage point, it looked like there was little skirmish at one point during the practice with LaCale London, and I couldn't see who the other player was. But what, what is your philosophy on that kind of thing, when there is to be some extracurricular, if, if I saw it right? Well, the, the bottom line is this, is that you have to work together to practice. This is bears on bears, and we're not going to tolerate that uh, here at the Bears. So um, it's a simple message. I, I have no problem delivering that message to anybody. So it's uh, they understand that. And because it's what happens is during the course of football, okay, there are things that happen, right, against your opponent. You're playing whatever, opponent A, B, or C, doesn't matter. You have to have emotional control, okay, during the course of the game. It's got to be a boxer's mentality because you can't go let your anger get to you because why? Then you'll foul, right? You'll make a stupid thing after the play, and now it's hurting our football team and hurting our chances to win. So that, to me, is, a, is what we have to learn, right, all of us, right, during the course of training camp, okay, and then even back in this, this part of this. So it was, uh, it was a very small. It was a couple shoves, and that was it, and they bro- it was no big deal. But, again, I, I said the message after the practice, say, hey, we got to make sure, you know, that was real small, but – that can escalate into something during a game where it's going to cause a penalty. We don't want that. Back to, to Jalen for a second. Specifically, what do you want to emphasize with him in 
work in progress nature and the things that you want him to improve on here in this day? Well, you know, I look at tape, but, the, you know, I, I do hold a little bit of, of, you know, onus to that, but I want to see him in person, you know, so I got I to gotta have time on task, you know, so I don't really know how to answer that question right now. You know, I'm going to be very general if I answer that question. So I got to see time on task. I got to see the guy cover. I got to see how he takes his angles, you know, how he plays the ball. I got to see all those things before we're going to start diving into uh, the details of, of that, of coaching him. Can you tell us about your first meeting with him when – Jalen Johnson, when, where, what you guys discussed? Uh, Jalen was, uh, you know, I don't recall. I don't recall when that was uh, offhand. I don't know the, the date. We did meet in the off season. He came in and we did meet, but uh, it was uh, that was a long time ago. Any, any so, recollections from the meeting? Anything no, you guys? I don't have, it was, hey, we were just talking about family because we were in the off season then. We were not part of any phases then. It was talking about, you know, family and just getting to know him. We know it's voluntary, but right. are you in communication with them? And what is your yeah, I'm in communication. Yep, I'm in communication with all the players. I always call and, and text them, "How you doing?" Uh, talk about their family, how's everything going? And like like I said before, that well, if, this time of year is voluntary, and everybody has something going on, right? And some things, you know, that are just you can't control as a person, right? And they have to be somewhere, and that that's okay, you know. So, but we want everybody here, but in some cases. Uh, they're not, and uh, we want, want them to be here. And when they'll be here, we'll coach them up. Robert Quinn is able to, when you spoke to him, you know, he knows his body and he knows how to get it ready. Mm -hmm. um, do you give any sort of wider berth to veterans who have been through this a couple of times? Well, you know, uh, I want them all here, you know, but it's voluntary, so they don't have to be here. And uh, he does know his body, and he's he's been a darn good player for a long time. Uh, so, but, uh, again, I wish he was here, but, again, it's voluntary. What kind of qualities do you value in your quarterback depth, and what do you want them to bring for a starter like Justin? Yeah, I mean support, you know, in all ways, you know, mental mental support, you know, being there for him, uh, you know, helping him, you know, through the process of learning, you know, and those what those veteran quarterbacks are, are doing, you know, they're doing a great job to help learn. Um, if there's any questions that he might have on the side, that's what they're there for. Um, they're there for encouragement, you know, as, as he goes through and makes good plays, they encourage. And if he has to has to adjust and adjust his footwork here, they might be a little sidebar, you know, between Janoko and, and, and Luke. All those guys are working to help him uh, be the very best player he can be. Are you already looking at players who could emerge as your team captains? And, like, when, when does that process start for you? And have you already decided your philosophy on captains? Are you a guy who wants the same ones all season? Do you go week by week? Yeah, I haven't decided the philosophy in terms of, like, picking those captains. Uh, but in terms of answer your question, the is yes. Uh, I've been watching that since day one uh, because leadership on a football team is the number one priority you have to establish. And um, it starts with the, with the coaches, but what's more important is the leadership in the locker room. So uh, we're doing a good job right now with the coaches. I have a conversation with those guys all the time, and I'm a, I love to observe people. And uh, being a good leader is about action. It's about doing, and it's about you know doing the things that you need to do in execution on the football field first. And a lot of those guys are rising to the top. So I let it happen organically just by observing it, and I set the parameters and the standards of what a football team, how they operate. Okay, and the guys that operate in that, okay, certainly can be themselves, no question about it. But the cream will rise to the top. It always does. My 30 years of coaching, I've seen it every single year. It'll rise to the top. And you hold guys to the standard, and then what will happen is we'll be able to say, okay, oh, there's one, there's one, there's one, and there's one. And you want one in every position group. You really do. Or two. Um, so we're, we're working to get that. And uh, we'll see where it goes. But, again, it's, a, it's an ongoing day-to-day -day evaluation. So Jalen Johnson, I know you said he's a young player. He's going into his third year. He's probably got things you'd like to see him work on. 
Is there anything you that you do as a coach that you can kind of time up the development of a Kyler Gordon who's just coming in, he's probably got a lot to learn, and someone who still is a young player in Jalen, is there stuff that you do to try to like get them on the same page at the same time in terms of development, skills? Yeah, I just think you coach them. You're coaching those guys. They play the same position. Uh, Kyler's been lighting it up the last two days. I was, I'll just tell you that. The guy's got tremendous ball skills. Uh, he's been playing the defense the right way. And uh, we're very impressed with him. Um, I'll just tell you that. And uh, he's doing a good job the, the first two days. We'll see where it goes. He's young. He's got a lot, lot, lot to learn. But we are excited where he is uh, with his ball hawking skills, no question. I thought you were just like towering some observation about how interested you are in observing people. Mm-hmm. What have you seen in Justin um, it, through that lens? I've seen just develop day to day, just keep getting better. And keep you know learning the system, and now he's starting to take control. You know, in terms of you know getting guys lined up, uh, helping guys after the play. Um, yep, you need to do it this way. You need to do it that way, and he does it in a good way. You know, the number one thing, one of the things we talked about first day is respect. We have to respect each other. So you have to be able to look each other in the eye and tell the truth. You have to be able to do that. So and that's what he does, and he does he can do it in a respectful way, in a challenging way. We're going to get better. And that's what he's done, and he's going to continue to do that. Coach, what, were your initial, what were your initial thoughts on the schedule when you saw the least home games, road games, win the bye, those types of things? Doesn't matter. It does not matter. I could care less. It doesn't matter your buys in, in December. That's the latest nope. you could possibly have. It doesn't matter. It is what it is, and we got to play the we got to play the schedule. So, uh, but you look at it uh, as a football coach. What you do is you look at it and you say, okay. You know, there's certain breaks in the schedule. When you have a bye week that late, well, when can you get the guys a break? You know, and the scheduling of it is very important because you want to get your guys fresh into the game. So you're certainly looking at that. We're putting that together as we speak, um, you know, the training camp schedule and what we're going to operate during the season. So, But in terms of y- your your question, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. you got to play the schedule. You see what I'm saying? But, um, but you do look at it. It's an important thing. You got your preseason opponents, by the way, the Chiefs, the Seahawks, the Browns. Are you planning to do joint practices with any of those three teams? You know, I don't think so. I don't think we are. Um, if, if we do, uh, we have. I'm in a conversation with one of them right now, and that might come up. Uh, I'm not going to say their name, but uh, but we could potentially do one. But I don't. I don't foresee it happening right now. Matt, can you give an example of something that's caught your eye from Kyler the last couple of days when you say he's lighting it up? Something that you've seen that that demonstrates that for us. Yeah, just his athletic ability. I mean, you know, you see guys being able to bend and contort and have body control like I talked about on the onset. Man, you know, that's it's been really good. It's been really good. And he's got a lot to learn, you know, because there's a lot of – when you're playing corner in the NFL, you have a lot of skill sets you have to cover. I mean, you have to cover guys from all different body types, all different skill levels, and that's a, that's a, big, that's a big task. And it's a hard position to play. You know, so he's got he's got uh, work to do, and he's going to do that.